Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. So today we're gonna to do a video review of this lock and flate brought to you by the same people that make lock and lube and we'll see if it's as good as their original product. So I've got two places that I can think of right off hand where this lock and flate should do a much better job than just a standard air chuck. So let's get it hooked up and try it out. These lock and flates come either open or closed and I bought the closed, the open one, you don't have to have the valve core inside the stem for them to work. And the closed one, the valve stem has to be inside to push against this before air will come through it. And so the, the closed would be what you'd wanna use for your car or tractor or anything like that. And then the open is if you're putting a tire back on the rim, that would come in handy. But I just uh, needed to close, so we'll try it out. This lock and flate has a quarter inch female thread there, female pipe thread. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this Merlin air chuck that I've got because it has a digital readout. So I'll take the chuck that came with it off. That had thread sealer on it, so I'll just use a little Teflon tape. Just wrap that with some Teflon tape. and put our lock and flate on. That ought to do it. Here's the first place I see these lock and lubes being something that I can use. This RV has duals, and on these dual wheels, the air valves come out on these stainless steel hoses and are held on by these brackets, which I think they're stainless steel also. That, I don't think that's aluminum, but you can see it's not very substantial. So these tires also take 100 PSI of air, and when I go to inflate them and check them before a road trip, cap off with the standard air chuck that I've got I have to push pretty hard and you can see how that's pretty wobbly so I have to push that on there to seal it and once I get it sealed then I can start putting air in it to get it up to the 100 psi and right Right now on that gauge, you can see it says 90. So I need to add air to get up to 100, but I'm pushing hard on that the whole time, and that's fairly, uh, I don't think that's real strong. So there's almost up to 100, but let's try the lock inflate. Okay, so with the lock inflate, I'll go down here, it looks like you can see that better. So you squeeze the end to open the jaws and then slide it on and release it, and it's supposed to lock on and hold on. This first time I've used it, we'll see how it does. Okay, so, and we're at 95.8. So that's why I went ahead and used this gauge. So that's pretty good. We're not losing any air around the valve stem. We're up to 98.8. We'll go to 100. So as I wobble it around a little bit, it does start leaking a little bit. I can get it on there better. It pops off at 100 PSI. That's for sure. Okay, I pressed a little harder and it went on without leaking. So I did lose some air. Let's go ahead and go up to 100 PSI.
There's a hundred. I got a tenth extra in there, but I'm not gonna worry about that. And there just dropped, so pop that off. Let's go to the other one. There we go, and it's not leaking. I think we're in spring. So my experience on these, at least, I had to kind of play with it a little bit to get it to lock on and not leak. But it wasn't hard to do. And there's probably a technique to it that I'm not quite up to speed on yet. But I do know this, to get these to 100 with those flexible hoses was always kind of a pain in the butt. And once you get it locked on there, this is much easier. So I'll fill this one to 100. And we'll go see the second place that I'm envisioning this being a real time saver. Okay, so here's the second place. I figure that lock and loop is going to be a real time saver and effort saver. So this tire has got a slow leak in it and it's almost flat. And it only takes 23 PSI of air, but that's a lot of air. Let's take off our valve cap. And we'll attach our lock and air from lock and lube. And we've got 4.1 PSI. And we're supposed to go up to 23. So. Now, here's the thing with this lock and flake. And the reason I really bought it. I did this. This is the second time I've inflated this tire. And I need to find out where it's leaking, of course. But the first time, I had to hold that air chuck on that valve stem for about 10 minutes while this thing got up to 23 psi of air so the lock inflate is much simpler now i'm doing is holding down the air valve on my harbor freight merlin air chuck with a digital pressure gauge and i'm working way less hard and so we went from 4.1 to 6.1 in that amount of time that I talked, which was maybe, I don't know, a minute. So it's going to take 10 to 15 minutes to fill this up to 23 PSI. And in fact, what I might do next is find a rubber band to hold this. Come back after maybe a, a monster. So with this one, that lock and flake went on real easily. Had no leaks. And I'm very impressed with it. So I'll go ahead and get this up to 23 PSI and we'll finish this out. Okay, I'm gonna run in and do a couple other things. You guys mind watching that for me? Thanks. Okay, thanks for watching that for me. Let's see where we're at. So we're at 22.1 PSI, and I think that's close enough. Here's where it says 23 PSI max, and we'll pop off our lock and flake. So pretty sweet. That took about 10 minutes, and I wouldn't have wanted to sit there and hold that old style air chuck against that valve that long. So I'm gonna say this is a winner. It works as well as the lock and lube. And from the front same company, we've now got lock and flake. Okay, while we're here, we'll go ahead and check the other side. Plus, we'll make sure that lock and flake didn't go on as just a fluke on the first side. So, let's see. So, here we've got 9.7 pounds. So we'll just go ahead and run that up to 22 as well. I won't make you guys watch it this time, but I will go ahead and clip on my auto throttle. I can find it. I guess that one. There we go. Okay, we'll see where we're at. So we're at 22.7 on that one. Not bad. Go ahead and unplug it. Nice.
Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up for our review of the Lock and Flate from Lock and Lube. And I'll tell you what, these would work for your car tires, but at 32 PSI, I'm not sure if it would be totally necessary, although it would definitely help. But for high pressure tires like those truck duels or RV tires, and then for low pressure but high volume tires like these tractor tires, this thing is hard to beat. So I found this for $46. I've seen them on eBay and Amazon, as well as in the local Napa's, but I just thought I'd try one out, and I'm glad I did. So, hope you liked the video. Have a great day, and be safe.